All right, all right, I hear you. You guys are like, well, Josh, why don't you record an Ibex? Why don't you record an Ibex? Fine, I'll record an Ibex. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV with a 19 QBS Ibex. Dry weight, this comes in just under 4,000 pounds. The maximum weight with cargo on this little guy is just under 5,000 pounds. So if you have a total tow capacity greater than 5,000 pounds, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to handle this. And the more you have above that, the happier you're going to be. My personal two cents is that if you have, say, uh, a 6,000 pound tow rating or above, I think you're gonna be good here. I think this is going to be an excellent fit for something like a tow package SUV or even a mid-size pickup. Someone who's looking for um, some decent size features, you're not looking for a compact trailer, but you need a compact weight. That is the sneaky little space that where this Ibex comes in right here. Um, it's interesting, and I'm going to talk more about this as we go. This is kind of an offshoot of the Surveyor R-Pod No Boundaries family, and it definitely um, has inspiration and borrows from those, but it, you know, it has found its own little space, and it's a very interesting space. Um, this is something that I think could be very comfortable for some park camping. I think this could be very comfortable for some casual camping. I also think this could be very fun for someone who wants to spend um, some time getting away from people. <laughs> and anybody who's spent more than five minutes in, in front of the pharmacy at Walmart knows exactly what I mean by that. No judgment, but I think you learn something when you hang out in front of the Walmart pharmacy for a while. Sometimes I do that just for fun. I'm just that way. So this thing is, uh, we've got uh, solar, we've got an inverter for power outlet usage, we've got a lifted tire package, I'm not going to call it a true off-road, I'm going to call it like a light duty. I think maybe that's, you know, you've got, you know, park camp, highway grade, light duty, heavy duty. This is in that light duty category where if you wanna get away from people a little bit, you can. It's got a couple little interesting Huh, why did they do that sort of things as I went through it? And I'm going to give you that good with the bad as we go. And if you appreciate what we're doing here for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And let me know, this is my first Ibex. How did I do? What did I miss? What do I need to catch next time? What do you like? What would you change given the opportunity? All right, so first impressions as I walk into these really for the first time. Ooh, ooh. Like there's a couple nice little, ooh, ah, kind of features here. Um. It's, it's very interesting. These ride uh, uh, a funny little line between camper, RV, between elegant and rugged. They're a hybrid amalgamation of a lot of different things. But what really threw me off about this is the body size of it. Um, because if when I walked in here, I was convinced, and even when I looked at it from the outside, it looked and it felt eight foot wide. And Ibex does make eight foot wide models. The ones that start with a model number of 20 are going to be eight foot wide. The model numbers like this that are uh, 19s, they, the paperwork is going to say seven foot four. It's basically like a seven foot body. And then it has uh, like the awning. So they say seven foot four, probably a little bit because of the axles as well. But um, it, it is a narrow body, easy towing, lightweight, but it doesn't look and feel small in here and the slide probably helps. Now it is non-centralized air, but it's a small camper. So to be fair, the bathroom, not going to get quite the airflow as the rest of the RV. And that's the kind of little thoughts and consideration I'm going to give you as we go around here. Now, um, let me, uh, let me get you in on a big hitter feature right here. True queen bed. That is a 60 by 80 true queen in a lightweight uh, single axle little camper. That is hard to find. Um, it's got pretty decent walk around space, although this has a large front pass through, which means you do have some of these big boxy jobs over here. So you need to kind of be aware of that. This RV also comes with a thousand watt factory inverter. So many of these outlets that we're looking at uh, will be able uh, to be run just off the battery if you are kind of primitive boondock dry camping, whatever you want to call it. Now, something else I think they did really nicely here, look at the windows all around this bed. And this is probably one of the things that skewed my perception, and I have a trained eye on this stuff. It looks and feels bigger in here than it actually is. The accent lights inside those overhead cabinets also didn't help. But again, I will be fair with you, there's a couple things they did here that I don't always love, but there's also a couple things they did that I really like. 
So I love the fact that they gave us a separate inside versus outside underbed storage area. That's fantastic. I'm really frustrated by the fact that we have only one gas strut holding up the bed deck, though. That's something that um, I, I see Cherokee's Alpha Wolf do. One gas strut is not enough. That is why I had to take the ugly TV box and shove it over on the side over there to keep the bed up. Because even the not amazing factory mattress, although that's not as bad as some that I've seen, um, you know, uh, it, it, uh, it, it can't even hold that mattress up. Now, um, I said TV box. Taking a look at the TV over here, if I uh, pop a squat on the sofa, I'm all the way on the right-hand side. This is, in a sense, the worst viewing angle possible on this thing. You see that you can still see the TV pretty well. You could actually see it even better if you wanted to, because one of the nice things here is this TV, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's ACDC in the fact that it goes both ways. And who knows? You might even call it TNT. Dynamite. <laughs> but if you're over here in the bed, like if I actually lay down on the bed, which by the way, come with the Star Trek Tribble pills. Anyway, um, sound effects uh, not included, by the way. Batteries not included either because it's just a pillow. You can watch TV at night. That's what I'm getting at. <gasps> actually, we might check this in a minute. You may be able to watch TV from the can, man. Now, one of the things that I just realized as I was laying here, I said this looks and it feels bigger because the front was wide open. That's because it does not have side hanging closets on either side of the bed, which is where this thing comes in really handy. Over here, you've got yourself uh, a little hanging wardrobe, and that thing on the right-hand side is either going to be... I wouldn't probably use this dresser space. I would say that's probably actually your pantry. Now, it's... Not the biggest chunk of storage in the world, but it's also a small camper. This is something I'm, I think is made for kind of hopscotching around for some fun little getaway weekends. I don't know that this is intended for somebody to spend the rest of their life in it, although everybody has their own things. So over here, this is interesting, and I would like you to tell me what you think about this. Down below the stovetop, they give us a convection microwave oven. There is not a gas of an option on these did they nail it did they fail it you tell me i'm curious to know what you think right there um i like the idea of the microwave being down low so that i don't spill hot soup down my arm but i know that some people like my grandmother would not like to bend over to get to that microwave that's the good and the bad that i want to give you now this is a really cool exceptionally uncommon feature in this class it comes with a central vacuum cleaner it doesn't come with the hose to hook up to the central vac. I don't know that you freaking need it, though, because it comes with the little electric dust pan over there because this is carpetless, this is ventless, this is easy cleaning. You can literally just sweep everything up into it, and a manual dust pan always leaves that little line of schmutz that it never wants to pick up, right? This does not have that problem. Now, you are a little bit limited on countertop space, so you're kind of really leveraging that chunk of countertop below the TV, above the plausitainment center over there uh, to do the trick for you. And they had to kind of finagle outlets wherever they could. You see, there's some to the left of the stove. There's some just in front of below the sink right there. Um, very kind of almost truck camper uh, inspired stovetop, almost like B van inspired big stainless deep sink in here. Thing is like, it's a round sink, sure. But it's a big one. I think you could actually get some decent pots and pans in there. Um, hold on. Let me let me do the field test. That is pocket screwed, ladies and gentlemen. And here's another way you can tell um, if you're you're not really sure on the whole um, uh, field test. Put your phone in, if I can hit the button, selfie mode, and you can actually peek right back there. And in real time, you can see what these things are built out of. So <clears throat> that's a wood core with an MDF fascia and a sticker wrap. Uh, that is, if you look at good, better, better still, and best cabinetry, this is in the better category, but frankly, that's pretty much what you get out of a lot of travel trailers. There's not a lot of travel trailers made with a total wood core style. Um, very, very uncommon. Anyway, uh, this has one of the larger 10.7 uh, cubic foot or 10.4, this one might be, it's a Norcold, but 10 plus cubic foot DC compressor fridges over here. I don't think 
they have a two-way fridge option. I could be mistaken on that. Uh, that's one of those things that I'm going to want to check on. And uh, oh, apparently someone's at the door. Hold on. Let me see who it is. Oh, wait. I can't. And in the words of perhaps the greatest philosophizer of the modern era, Mr. Forrest Gump, that is all I have to say about that. Now, notice I did not do the Forrest Gump voice. I personally, it's one of those things, everybody has their little trigger factors. There are so many people who have just butchered the Forrest Gump voice over the years that, um, it, to, you know what it is to me? It's like a record shop owner, um, uh, like a guitar store owner. Uh, when somebody walks in uh, and tries to play Stairway to Heaven and butchers it, there's a reason those places still have signs that say, no Stairway to Heaven, okay? I get it. Wow, I went way off topic. I'm so sorry. Welcome to <coughs> Squirrel with Josh the RV Nerd. So I mentioned we are carpetless, we're easy cleaning. If you're looking at this, you're going, oh man, I would love it if this had a theater seat. This is probably one of the most visual examples uh, of why this RV cannot have a theater seat right here. I'm so glad they kind of left it open like that because this slide actually goes over the wheel well. So right under that sofa is the bottom of the slide. The slide doesn't go all the way to the floor. This is a thousand percent not theater seat capable. Otherwise, your feet would be dangling off the edge like, uh, you know, backseat of your daddy's Studebiker or, you know, whatever. My, my mom's Dodge Dynasty growing up. If we're going to go back to those days, back when cars looked all boxy and whatnot. Uh, the good news, though, they do include for you a handy little place to eat with a portable, free-floating elliptical base table. And that is a nice little guest sleeper space that, uh, you know, could also fit a big dog if need be. Notice that you've got that privacy shade over there. Uh, one of the other things I meant to showcase for you, apologies that I missed this, is that all of these overhead cabinet doors, they are strutted and they're double strutted. Uh, double them. Uh, uh, so that, uh, you know, you don't have to constantly juggle those things open with your head. Now, this is definitely one of those times because it has non-centralized air that the little pockets above and below the door are going to be welcome because they do at least allow for they'll allow some hot air to breathe out of the rv while the cold air that settles from the air conditioning can kind of slip under the door a little bit i'm still not going to tell you that the bathroom is going to be climate controlled like the rest of the rv of course you could always be like my uncle gary at the walmart hey 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 i'm doing looks like they got prunes on sale in the flyer and I'm not saying I'd want to sit here and watch a feature-length blockbuster like the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, which is like the only series of movies longer than the actual books. But my point is, we're kind of toilet TV certified over here. Now, speaking of the view from the toilet, apologies for my footprints in there. You won't see those when you take the RV home. This is your view from the toilet. So if your partner's taking a shower, uh, you have a front row seat, that's for sure. These all have the little Aquaview shower miser so that if you are off grid, you can make sure that you're not wasting any of that precious fresh water. This has 30, 30, 30 gallon uh, tanks, by the way. Now, um, we're a radius shower because this is that seven foot four wide uh, body. I think I stated that incorrectly earlier. I'm so sorry. But seven foot four in the 19s, eight foot wide on the, the 20s. Um, we're six and a half foot tall, so my head needs to be in that bubble, but it's okay. I mean, you know, again, a small camper, they're doing pretty good here. I do really like the bigger vent fan. They don't include the roof cover, but they make it easy for you to do that. Um, overall, the bathroom felt decently spacious. It could definitely use uh, a space for like a small linen cabinet or a towel bar or something. The overall space around the toilet felt good, but my right leg was kind of fighting with the shower a little bit, but it wasn't awful. Another thing here is uh, uh, you've got 12 volt holding tank heaters. This has an enclosed underbelly holding tank heater standard on all of these. And that is our charge controller right there because this has a 190 watt roof factory solar package as well. Something else this RV has is TNT Dynamite travel road mode function baby and, and i mean it is really nice in here the extra couple inches of body width 
when the slide's retracted, makes it very comfortable to pass through here. Um, and actually, they left enough room over here, and this is only 23-foot tip-to-tail tongue to bumper, but you can still do the butt scoot boogie and get yourself around the bed there. So you don't even necessarily have to crawl into bed if you're making a travel stop. Refrigerator is right by the door. No kitchen drawers are lost. Bathroom is obviously functional. This is 100% totally turtle friendly, dude, and passes the Cracker Barrel test. Nerd preferred travel access. Now it's a windy son of a gun of a morning, but uh, compared to back home where I was walking around with a winter jacket and boots, and long underwear, I'm walking around this place in, uh, you know, just my shirt. Like, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, so I said how this is kind of a uh, an offshoot of the Surveyor no, R-Pod No Boundaries lineup. Um, this is sort of like if a Nobo and a Surveyor had a baby, if that makes any sense, where they kind of took a No Boundaries and puffed it up to the size of like a Surveyor LE. And actually, if you're familiar with that, if you if you hadn't drawn the connection, when I say that, you kind of go, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I get it now. So, you know, we're, we're eight foot wide. But again, we are still on a single axle. Everything on this RV reads tandem axle, except the fact that it is uh, a single, it's basically an axle delete camper. But what that's doing for us is it's keeping the weight and the cost down nicely. Hopefully the wind is not eating up the microphone. I know there's no trees in the background around here, nothing but cornfields, but um, it, uh, it it is a windy son of a gun. Pardon my little power box. This is a good example, folks, of the fact that if you leave the 12 volt fridge on, even that 190 watt roof solar package that's on here will overpower the battery. So I still had to kind of supplement a little here. Although that battery disconnect on the front had someone actually exercise the, uh, the usage of that thing, we would, have, uh, we would have avoided this situation, you know. Now, one of the things that's cool here, we got magnet holdbacks and a true pass-through. Single axle campers, a lot of times you don't get that because a lot of single axle campers, you get that weird corner bed. One of the things about this being a full north-south bed, eight foot wide, is they could put a normal, traditional bedroom on the thing. Now, look up at the ceiling. You see that little gray box over there? You might be going, what the heck is that? And first of all, if you did ask it like that, I would ask if your Axel Rose on his way to Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. But that is your 1000 watt inverter. Very similar to what you might find on, uh, say like your, your Geo Pros, your, your Rockwood and Flagstaff Micro and Mini Lights. Um, that is going to be providing, uh, you know, power to household outlets in this RV that normally uh, wouldn't operate if you are off grid. So again, light duty, if you're going to make a brief stay over off grid. That's what this is currently equipped for. This is not like you can you can live in the woods and hide from the government. Like that's not what this is right all. Corporate McStuffy pants will still find you and still tax you. <laughs> I tell you what though, I'm gonna give them some credit. Oh, you know what? Let's look at a plus minus here. Awning. I think they did a good job on the awning. They did what they could with the space they had. They still maintained a nice big bedside window up front. So I'm gonna give them some points for that. They put the awning arm all the way up next to it. But the awning arm is next to the door, which means if it's rainy, you're gonna get spritzed in the face, people. Now, it is actually not this low to the ground. It actually is lifted a little bit, but you can see how there's not a flat spot around here. Very um, <coughs> Rockwood inspired little griddling station over here. Although um, Rockstaff Flagwood, whatever you want to call them, they, uh, they, they've certainly inspired a lot of things like Coachman's Freedom Express series does something very similar. Um, but you know what? If it works, it works, right? Like we've got that nice little platter table right there. We've got the little griddle situation going on. Now, if you don't want it bracketed to the camper, remember that table that we saw uh, on the inside of the RV? Well, guess what, Carol Baskins? And if your name is Carol Baskins and you guessed that you could put that griddle on that there floating table, then you guessed right. And you know what you won? Absolutely nothing, son. But the fact is, you can do it. Um, over here, it's a single axle. Again, I believe that's a 5K axle. The GVW of this is, I think, 4,975 pounds. Um, so uh, the the thing here, you know, it, it's it's got a, a limited cargo capacity, but a lot of people go, I wouldn't put that weight on a single axle. The axle's rated for it, the tires are rated for it. There's no reason that should be an issue. I recommend being careful with your loading and don't go Baja with the sucker. But notice the little silver lining. God forbid you do have a flat tire. Um, 
Well, at least you've got a galvanized rolled steel, uh, or not galvanized, I'm sorry, galvanized steel wheel well there. I'm not going to tell you that's going to prevent any and all damage ever in the event of a blowout, but it's certainly going to help. Little sprayer hose over here so that, uh, ladies, if your uh, husband ever gets you miffed a little bit, um, you can put that on jet mode. Where is that? Jet, 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 jet mode. And then uh, just make sure... You don't missed. <laughs> oh, that was that was a lot of lead up for very little payoff, admittedly. <laughs> Folding stable steps, keeping the uh, wiggle and the jiggle out of the RV, which um, on a, a small single axle camper like this is kind of nice. It does have front and rear stabilizers. I want to point that out because not all single axles do. We're backup camera ready, but frankly, even an RV that doesn't have a backup camera prep point is backup camera ready. And if you don't know what I mean by that, uh, well, let me know and I'd be happy to kind of fill you in on the blanks here. Now, this is a Schwintex slide. It's a straight in and out slide. Schwintex slides kind of get a lot of grief sometimes because manufacturers for too long put them on too big and too heavy of slides that have no business handling them. On a small, lightweight and shallow slide like this, it is exactly a the proper application for something like this. And once again, notice how the slide is above the wheel well, and the wheel well uh, juts up into the body of the RV. Those kind of things are, are what's allowing this RV to stay under 4,000 pounds dry weight, to open up opportunities for new tow vehicles, but they're also preventing you from getting theater seating. So what if you really want a theater seat? Well, I got options for you. Check the links in the video description. Um, I leave you tons of information down there, by the way. For those who weren't aware, if you ever check that description area, I leave you like the full specs of the RV. I leave you a chapter jump quick list now. That's an extra thing I'm trying to now do by, by your request. I'm trying to make it easier to navigate my long, long videos. Um, and I also tend to leave you links to similar floor plans, some of which will have either an inclining thing like a Freedom Spear or a full-on recliner like, say, a Cougar, or Rockwood, a Flagstaff, something like that. So we've got all kinds of different options for you. Meantime, let's hop upstairs. And you know, one of the things I am really enjoying about my travels now is that I get to see all these different places and they all have a different kind of beauty about them. Um, Iowa here, it's not terribly far from Michigan, so it kind of makes sense that it reminds me a lot of Michigan. Even when I landed on the airplane, I looked at the highways, I'm like, I feel like I'm home. It just, this is such, just a down home, like, you know, I don't know, man. It just feels homey here. Anyway, sorry, I, I just started waxing poetically. I'm still jet lagged to beat the band, by the way. Um, oh! Yeah, up top here, remember that bigger Coleman 15,000 BTU air? Now you see these black lines up front here. Those are for um, if you wanna add like a roof cargo rack, it's all pre-prepped for that, which is nice, cause that's factory installed. Because if you tried to take like, say this big fifth wheel over here, or that one, or that one, or that one, or any of these things in the background, if you tried to take these things and you tried to add uh, a cargo rack or something to the roof of them, you would be uh, voiding those affected areas of your warranty. Now, if you screw something into the roof, the door is still covered, but manufacturers don't cover work they didn't do. So if you just wanna take a bike rack and add it to this, you're good, guys. That's one of the nice things about them pre-prepping things. On a similar note, this one mm, kinda feels like a little bit of a miss to me, but I don't know. At least they made it easy. You've got those little ears that stick up over the bathroom vent right there, that big XL fan. So if you want to add like a big Max Air uh, Camco vent cover or something, it is prepped to do that, again, without screwing up your warranty. And of course, we've got that Go Power 190 watt roof solar package. And with the charge controller that's on this, if you want to add a second panel and go up to 380 watts, I don't see any reason why you'd need to do things like change up wiring or anything like that. I, I think you'd be able to double this, but I will also tell you, I am not uh, the authority on solar stuffages. All right, so apparently I got the inside track on something that hasn't been implemented yet. I mentioned just a second ago, 30 amp controller. That's not yet the case. They're going to it. We're just not exactly sure when. Somehow I got that information available before I even uh, had my hands on one of these. Regardless, this currently has a 190 watt roof solar panel, has a 10 amp charge controller, meaning this RV in as it sets right now, this is maxed effectively. So if you need a little bit of extra juice, what you can do is get one of those little portable solar, uh, solar suitcase panels, 
And you might go, yeah, but I don't see a plug on the side. You don't need one. Uh, uh, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is those portable little su solar suitcase things come with two plugs typically. One for those little pre-prep plugs, and then the other one is just a set of alligator clips that you hook right onto the battery. So you could hook it straight up to the battery, and the portable solar suitcase, which I finally said correctly, has its own charge controller basically. So the two things can work together without nuking your battery that's on the tongue of the RV or batteries as it were, depending on what you want to do with it. So eventually what I first said will be correct. It's not exactly the case yet. So if you're like, well, then what am I buying today? Call your sales contact here. We'll double check the RV. We'll make sure you're getting exactly what you're thinking you're getting. And, if I had hair, it would be just flipping in this breeze. Holy cow. So what do you think? My first Ibex. Did I nail it or did I fail it? I am okay uh, with, with you letting me know either of those things. Like, I want to hear the good and the bad from you just like I'm giving you the good and the bad. You know what I mean? Um, and sometimes it's not necessarily uh, what's bad. It's just this is my personal perspective. And I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, whatever I say is be authority on the topic. Not at all. Not at all. There's a ton of different campers, a ton of different ways to camp. And I just love the fact that I get to show you all these different things. And if you like seeing all the things, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our videos. And folks... I can't wait to see what's next around the corner because I'm out here in Urbana, Iowa today and we have these at several of our locations. So if you ever want to know where we have one of these parked and what it's running, check that link in the video description. And short of that, remember folks, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and make it a bishtastic day, everyone. <laughs>